1994, we had a, one of our residents in Pompano Beach, an um, 89-year-old lady named Lillian DeCloy, and she was brutally beat and killed within her residence. And for the most part, there wasn't a single clue or witness or anyone that could account for a potential suspect. But uh, coming over in 1999, the Broward Sheriff's Office absorbed the law enforcement responsibility for Pompano Beach, and that case has been sitting with this organization since that time. And when we launched our cold case unit, one of the core things we wanted to do was to start tackling and looking at these cases and giving these victims and their families closure in the community closure. In this particular case, we've had success once again by utilizing modern, modern day technology, DNA, and being able to tie that back to a suspect who actually used to reside only a few, block, a few homes away from the victim. And we identify that suspect, his name, we'll make sure we give it to you off of the record, is Johnny Mac Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown was a Vietnam veteran, suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, had addictions and all type of problems in terms of drug abuse. And during that time, we weren't able to identify him having any correlation to this. Uh, but some of our members today, I'm going to introduce them momentarily. We'll be able to talk a little bit more about the specific elements for their investigation, how they went about acquiring him as a suspect. But most, most certainly and ultimately, we are able to identify him as a suspect who ended up brutally killing um, one of our residents here in Pompano Beach. Back in 94, uh, detectives looked at it. The scene looked like a burglary. It looked like entry was made to the bedroom window. There was a struggle inside. The house had been ransacked. Uh, Lillian had obviously fought for her life. Uh, she sustained numerous injuries in, in the fight. Um, ultimately, they didn't come up with a suspect, and it went cold for a good many years. Um, so back in 2004, our crime lab started uh, doing some DNA testing on some old cases, and they actually tested her nightgown that she had on, which at the time we suspected that she might have been sexually assaulted. Nightgown had been pulled up. Uh, they looked at that, they found semen, they ran a profile on it, came back with a profile that, that, that they then entered into CODIS, the national database, came back with no match. So that was in 2004. It sat from 2004 till 2019 when the sheriff got our unit together. We took another look at it. We saw that we had a uh, CODIS that didn't hit. We had a full profile, so we went from there. Um, we retested the clothing. Uh, we knew of new technology that uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement was utilizing uh, to do the familiar testing that maybe if we couldn't get this profile identified, maybe we could get a family member identified. And that's exactly what we did. We went to Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, they retested it and came up with a young man who had spent time in Florida prison that we now knew was a relative to the suspect. He wasn't the suspect, but he was a relative. Came back a close suspect, a first degree relative, which meant that it had to be his father or an older brother with the same mother and father. Uh, that kind of made it easy for us at that point. We identified Johnny Mac Brown as his father. Uh, he did have an older brother, but it wasn't the same mother and same father, so we knew 100% it would be him. Then we had to make absolutely sure that we had the right guy before we close out a case. So what we did was we partnered with Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and we went up there and we got a court order signed by a judge to uh, exhume Mr. Brown's uh, remains. He was a vet. He was uh, buried up at the National Cemetery up in uh, Lake Worth. Uh, and we went up there and we exhumed his body and got the tissue samples we needed and we did the testing, came back, you know, 100% him. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.